Cyborgs. We've all seen the Terminator. But are all cyborgs out to end us? Or could they be used to help us? I'm here tonight with the world's first cyborg, Professor Kevin Warwick of the Cybernetics Group at Reading University, to find out more. Professor, welcome. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Yeah. So, so what is a cyborg and what is cybernetics? Yeah, well, cybernetics is linking technology, humans, communication, control, bringing it all together. And a cyborg is a special case of that, which Arnie Schwarzenegger defined it best. Yes, yeah. Cybernetic organism, part human, part machine, or part animal, part technology. It's sure. that, when, when it all comes together. I like to think it's um, also enhancing, you know, that the cyborg has extra abilities rather than having problems. Or Okay, yeah. So talking about this enhancement uh, side of things, what, what have you done? What, what sort of stuff has, has happened in the field? Well, um, the last implant that I had was 100 electrodes fired into my nervous system, linking my nervous system with the computer, also linking my nervous system with my wife's nervous system. Yeah. She also had electrodes. One of the things we did, which is an enhancement, is to send signals from her nervous system to my nervous system and back the other way. Yes. So yes. every time she moved her hand, my brain received a pulse. So it was like a telegraphic, if you remember the, the Morse code type of uh, system. What we were doing was that, but this time nervous system to nervous system. And where the research is heading is clearly to do that brain to brain. Brain to brain, yeah. So in the first instance, just simple telegraphic, but just as the telephone has moved forward and we now have uh, laptops communicating in parallel with each other. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to communicate brain to brain parallel signalling directly, thoughts, images, graphical concepts, okay. ideas, emotions. Uh, we'll have a much richer form of communication instead of this pretty pathetic speech yeah. that we have. It's, it's, it's awful, really. So limited. Yeah, this is a problem we all have is trying to find the words, the right words to express what you mean, and then that will become. Yeah, and I mean, a the thing words, the past, you, you have one, everybody has fantastic thoughts and so on, and you, you try and say them to somebody you know, and you, you, these, these complex thoughts and images, you're converting to these little serial coded pressure waves, yeah. which is what words are, which is all they are bear yeah. almost no relation to the original thoughts that you had. Yeah, and there's the only, say, 10,000 words in the dictionary. Which yeah. means, how can we really say what we mean with those 10,000 yeah, words? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so if we can see brain to brain then, is that what's it going to mean for privacy? Because a basic human privacy right now is, you could be thinking anything, but I won't know. All I know is what you're expressing. So this is going to be a good thing, that I will get to actually know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this also could be a bad thing, because it no longer leaves anything to the imagination. I, I uh, think that's been what's happening. That's the way the world is going. Um, if you look at how things have changed, we've been giving up privacy and giving up with privacy. The, with the internet, I guess. With the internet, with different communication and so on. And now around the world, uh, years ago, if you wanted to communicate with somebody in Australia, you would have to get on a ship and travel for a long, long Months. time and yeah. eventually say, hello, how are you? Now, you can just press a few buttons and that's it. Yeah. You're communicating with them, even visually looking at them and they're looking at you and so on, um, which is it's phenomenal in that sense. But if you now look 10, 15, 20 years ahead, where's it going to go? Yeah. Well, clearly, signals from brain to brain, it has to be there. So is that one of the drivers for you to improve communication? Is that yeah, one of the reasons I, you do this? I, communication, I think, it really is so poor how we communicate as humans. It's the interface between the human brain and technology. We have the technology now to move forwards with the interface and if we can communicate just a little bit better that will be fantastic. So yeah. it's one of my drivers. Yeah. Yeah. It will help people locked in patients, people who have difficulties communicating but for all of us... Mutes, for example. The mutes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for all of us, it's an enhancement. Why not everybody communicate that way? Very exciting enhancement. Yeah, yeah. So these are, these are really big ideas, then. They're, they're totally changing the whole social structure of... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And senses. We, we have five fairly limited senses. Yeah. Vision is okay, but it's a small frequency spectrum. If we can now look like your television set senses in infrared, 
Why not you? Yeah. Why not ultrasonics? Why not ultraviolet? So increasing the range of sensory input, which will increase the complexity that we understand the world in. So it may well allow us then to start thinking about doing other things yeah. than we, we think now are impossible because yeah. we don't sense. What's yeah, I can on. really see that the whole brain to brain thing increasing everything, increasing the rate of everything, increasing the rate of science, yeah. increasing the rate of business, for example, how well, yeah. everything, can, everything will move forward faster. And if you're not connected. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, this is how it is with the internet and this is how it will probably yeah, yeah, yeah. be, I guess, with brain to brain. Um, so who is getting involved in this? I mean, surely everybody wants to be involved. I mean, I can't, I don't know why, yeah, why I, this I, is not I'm huge. I'm surprised I mean, there's not more. There are some research groups, yeah. um, mostly in the US, I have to say. In the UK, uh, I mean, certainly signals into the brain for therapeutic, for medical purposes. Yeah. One of my areas, as you know, is looking at implants to help people with Parkinson's yes, disease. Yes. So there are seven, eight surgeons in the UK that carry out that particular operation. And is that but happening it, regularly? No. Yeah, the, the Tipu as is that we work with at John Radcliffe Hospital, Oxford, he puts in uh, electrodes in a patient, a new patient, as yeah. it were, every week. So there's another new patient comes on board. Um, even with holidays, that must mean something like 35 patients a year. Yeah, with just uh, one man. One man, yeah. one hospital, and there are about seven or eight in the UK. So around the world, there are now, okay, it's more the Western world, the US and Western Europe, but there's large numbers of people that now are walking around with an implant providing electrical stimulation in their brain to counteract the effects of Parkinson's yeah. disease. So for those who haven't seen, what, what, kind of, what, oh. what kind of advantages and what kind of, what kind of right. recovery do people Parkinson see? Parkinson's disease is it's, it's a horrific problem. It's not something that is pleasant at all. People are left infirm. They're, they're in a wheelchair. They can't, in the latter stages, they can't dress themselves. They can't um, go to the toilet themselves and so on. So it's a pretty severe case. This counteracts the effects of the disease. So to all intents and purposes, when the stimulator is working, they, they are a regular person. This is providing an electrical stimulation that is counteracting the effect of the disease. Yep. Um, and certainly the, the patients that I'm aware of drive their car. Um, do things. Do they, do just so they've the gone from having Parkinson's to driving their cars. Drive, yeah, they've they gone from being a patient that needs regular care, um, have somebody looking after them, uh, maybe a nurse all the time, and now they, they're a regular person. Okay, okay. And, and what are you going to do now? What's, what's the future hold? What are you, what are you doing um, at the moment? I'm just going to take things easy. And No, I... <laughs> uh, a number of projects that I'm involved with. One, as you know, is growing brain cells, particularly human brain cells, to put them in a robot body. We already have, it's on YouTube, if you go on YouTube, yep. Rat Brain Robot, and you can download a little video showing something of what we're doing. Okay. Um, but we're looking now to put human brain cells in the robot body. Partly it's to, to understand how memories evolve and how they appear in the brain. That's very exciting for me. Another one with the brain-to-brain -brain communication is to actually carry that out. I would like to have an implant in my brain okay. to link it maybe with yourself. Maybe. Because uh, yeah. you, your head is shaved yeah. enough to, I'm ready. to have, yeah. well, you're ready for it. To carry out that first communication, probably telegraphic, very simple, brain-to-brain, -brain, just to show, yes, we can do it and to learn from it. I think another thing which is quite exciting for me as well, completely different, is the possibility of transmitting power, electrical power, without wires. Okay. And I think there is going to be a breakthrough. We have one group working on it, but I know there's two or three groups. It's something Nikola Tesla spoke of about a hundred years ago. Yes, this is going yes, to be a big yes. It's a big thing. In, it's always been a big thing in physics. Yeah, um, that's yeah. right. And I, th I think... It's not going to be too long before we have an actual method that is successful of achieving that. Yeah. And uh, very fascinating work. Thank you. Thank you. Good talking with you. Cheers. Thanks very much.